Welcome back everyone to another edition of Stadiums of the World. Today we're covering the iconic Wrigley Field, also known as the Friendly Confines, and the home of the Chicago Cubs. Wrigley Field is located in Chicago, Illinois, on the north side of Chicago. It has a capacity of 41,649. I was lucky enough to visit this iconic stadium when I was on my bachelor party. When I was there, it was a rainy day, which caused a weather delay. The upside to that, though, was that we were able to check out some of the bars in the area. One of the bars we went to in the area was across the street and it was called Sluggers. It was an awesome bar that had batting cages and arcade games and all sorts of stuff to do on top of the drinking events. So it was a lot of fun to go drink some beer and go hit the batting cages. I would definitely recommend checking that out if you have time when you're at Wrigley Field. Another option if you don't want to go there and don't want to swing the batting cages is there's Gallagher Way. It's uh, located next to the stadium on the left field side. Uh, we, we checked it out after the game. It has multiple levels of bars and is also a lot of fun. You can see the, the Budweiser brick house from, from this view. On the outfield of Wrigley Field, you can see that they have the iconic Wrigley rooftops. These are buildings that are outside the uh, stadium that have bleachers on top of them. This has been something that's been going on for years. One thing I didn't realize is all the people would party in the buildings below the roof and then you'd have the, the roof seating on top. I always knew about the seating on top of the roofs, but I didn't know all the parties going on within the buildings. And you can actually go to you know WrigleyRooftops.com and check out those those seats and the parties inside. So I, would, I didn't get the, to do that, but I would highly recommend it. It looked like a lot of fun. A couple of facts about Wrigley Field. It opened in 1914. It's the second oldest ballpark in Major League Baseball behind the iconic Fenway Park in Boston. The owner of the Wrigley Gum Company bought the team back in, I believe, 1921, and that's what the stadium is named after. Wrigley Field was the last stadium in Major League Baseball to add lights. They didn't add lights until 1988, so kind of interesting. There was no night games at Wrigley Field until after 1988. You can see them on top of the, the stadium. And if you look at it, it almost looks like it's original. You wouldn't, you would never know that, that they're newer, obviously. So exploring the ballpark, you can see the old engineering of this stadium, given how old it is. There's a lot of trusses and very unique stuff that you wouldn't see in a, a modern ballpark. Here's an example looking at all the truss framing of the, the second level deck here. Speaking of the second level deck, the second level deck was added in 1937. When the stadium opened, there was only the first level and, and over the years they've expanded on the stadium and the upper deck was added. Walking through the stadium, you can really see just how old it is. There's a lot of unique features like this ramp going across that you kind of kind of go, wow, I would never see this in a, in a modern ballpark. And you, it's, it's cool to go walk around and see what they did, you know, 100 plus years ago. The other thing that I thought was really cool or interesting was the, the box seating. So you have the, the lower level tier and in the second level tier. But with, within the two, you have the box seating or the club seats, etc. And it's kind of crazy to see how that, that looks. You can see it in this photo here. It's kind of almost hanging, if you will, below the second deck. And when you sit in the seats behind it, you can actually see, see into the back side of those boxes. And in this photo, you can see that. So when you're sitting at your seat, you, you have the boxes up above you. And you, you would never see that in a modern stadium. The stadium was renovated pre previously, uh, I believe between 2014 and 2019, they added the massive video boards and you can now walk around the perimeter of the outfield. Uh, it's nice to be able to just walk all the way around continuously and to check it out, as you can see here. 
This is another view of, of walking around. This is looking at the right field. It's another, you can see both the video boards that were added and the, the field was modified some with this and you can walk around the outfield here. You can clearly see it. From this angle, you get a really good view of the, the two tiers of the stadium and the box seats. Uh, the stadium's really old. It's experienced not just the Chicago Cubs, but they've also had multiple NFL teams here. The Chicago Bears used to play here and also the Chicago Cardinal play here, now the, the Arizona Cardinals, but two other teams that played here, not just baseball. So it's a lot of history to, to see and experience, and it's, it's pretty cool just to walk around the stadium. Even though it was raining, it was when I went before the game, it was a lot of fun to just check it out. Another iconic piece of the stadium and what, what comes to mind when I think of Wrigley Field is the, the ivy that grows on the, the brick in the outfield. Uh, I was lucky enough to see it when I went there. I was a little worried going in beginning part of May that it wouldn't have grown yet, but it was out full force and it was pretty awesome to see. Uh, I believe there, there was one of the balls got stuck in there during the game. So kind of kind of a unique thing to the stadium. Here in the outfield, it's the they have the bleachers. Uh, it's the only part of the ballpark that doesn't have chair back seating, and this is kind of where all the kind of crazies hang out. You see on TV, you see the the fights and people drinking tons of beer. Uh, not really where you wanted to be during this game when it's raining, but it, it looks like it's a lot of fun. I didn't sit here, but it would it seems like it could be a cool place to to take in in a game, especially if you're hanging out with with a group of friends and want to have a good time. Another thing to point out is there's great seating in this ballpark. It's it's a small ballpark. You can see here you got chair back seating. You're close to the action, and most of the seating is is really great. With that said, though, and not every seat is one that you would want to take a seat in. You can see this seat here. Uh, if you sit where the guy behind the column is, you're not going to see anything. You're not going to be able to see the game. So kind of the downside of historic ballpark is not every seat's great. I, I don't know what you would do if you sat there. I guess if you if you didn't know and you had and that was your seat, I guess you would ask for your money back or you, I guess you walk around the stadium during the game. Not really sure what you do in that situation. Another thing to point out, if you can see it here, it's kind of hard to tell. But if you look at the, the pitcher's mound and home plate compared to the wall behind it, it appears to be offset, and that's because it is. The, the seating behind home plate was actually moved back at some point in time. There was not enough room on the property, so they, they moved the whole stadium back, and when they did that, kind of shifted where the field is, and so now it's offset from the pitcher's mound and home plate. So I always see it on TV, thought it, thought it seemed kind of weird, but it's cool to go check out in person and see just how far off it was. Wind is a big factor in Wrigley Field. If you ever watch a Cubs game, they're always showing the, the wind effect on a ball. It, it often blows in and keeping home runs from going out, but it's every once in a while it shifts and the, the wind will blow, blow it out the opposite direction, but it always has an impact on the ball given the location of the lake. The other thing here, you can see the hand-operated scoreboard in center field. That's left over from, from way back towards the beginning of the stadium, and it's cool to see it's still around. Wrigley Field is located in an area of Chicago called Wrigleyville. Everything around Wrigley Field is Wrigleyville, and I would definitely recommend checking that area out. We took a train into that area, and it was a short walk from the stadium, and definitely fun to see. So when you're, when you're up at Wrigley Field, don't just check out the stadium. Also check out the surrounding area. Wrigley Field is such an iconic stadium. Hollywood loves to feature it in movies. Uh, some of the movies you can easily spotted out. I think of, you know, Ferris Bueller's Day Off and The Rookie. It's it's kind of a center point of The Rookie and Ferris Bueller's Day Off. You see it there. Everybody knows that it's that's what it is. Uh, there's some other movies that you may not know right away that is Wrigley Field, but it's, it's used a lot. So it's, it's a very iconic stadium, and it's definitely one that you want to check out. Here's a beautiful shot at night as the, the sun's gone down and the, the lights have lit up. This takes us to the end of our tour of Wrigley Field, so to speak. Here's kind of a last image of myself standing there, just kind of showing that I was at the stadium. Uh, definitely recommend checking out Wrigley Field. It's one of the most iconic stadiums out there. I've had a pleasure to see this one and Fenway Park, two very unique baseball stadiums. And 
Well, I guess until next time, uh, take care.